Hey, my name is Dave. I am a designer at Adobe, and I love to draw. Uh, this is what my office whiteboard looks like. Uh, some call it art, some call it the scrawlings of a madman and a desperate cry for help. You be the judge. Um, but the thing I love to draw the most are robots. Uh, robots are the perfect excuse, I feel like, to let your imagination run wild. They can be made up of whatever parts or pieces or you know, connections. They can work however you want. So a salad-headed robot could have you know, a salad bowl for a head and utensils for arms and salad dressing dispensers in his chest. And an oven robot could have you know, a pizza uh, mouth, an uh, oven pizza mouth and spatula and uh, slicer arms or that sort of thing. Um, but here's another one I like, Music Bot. This is a, uh, I, I love hiding little details inside robots. So like this guy's all about musical instruments and he has hidden in his surface, you know, a Marshall half stack, half stack, a vinyl record player, a cowbell, uh, all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, this is probably my favorite one, GameBot. This is a mixture of an Xbox controller and an arcade cabinet, and includes tons of references, everything from the Konami code to the Triforce. But you'll notice something. All my robots are standing still. And I've always wanted to bring them to life, to let them have a voice, to have parts move and transform and have things explode and flamethrowers shoot out of them or jetpacks or that sort of thing. But traditional animation, uh, character animation, has always felt really difficult and uh, time intensive. And I, I wish there was an easier way to translate my illustrations, my characters, into animated uh, characters. And luckily, now there is, thanks to Adobe Character Animator. So this is a robot I drew called Evans. And he's hundreds of layers in Photoshop. He's a pretty complex character. But I named the layers a certain way. Head, left eyebrow, right pupil, that sort of thing. And because I did that, that translates to a character that Character Animator can understand. So if I go into Character Animator, once you import a file, it shows up here, same layer structure as you would have in Photoshop or Illustrator. It takes Photoshop or Illustrator files. And if I didn't name something right, so for example, if I call something head, that means when I move my head, it's going to be able to follow my emotions. Uh, if I didn't name it correctly, though, we have a nice tag panel over here on the side. And so I could just click this to tag it. So if you have layer 100, you know, 475, 472 final final for real this time, and you want that to be the left eyebrow, you can just tag it in the character animator, and it works. And what that does is creates an animated character. So I am controlling this character now with my face and my voice using just a standard webcam and microphone. And uh, this nightmarish image that you're seeing here is what's controlling everything. And uh, this, is, again, works with any webcam. It's, it's following my blinking, my eyes, uh, my eyebrows, my mouth, the voice, everything I'm saying, and translates that into a character. Now, I can also drag the arms around with the mouse or fingers on a touch-enabled device. Uh, have him wave to everybody. And then if I press the 9 key on the keyboard, he starts to clink his hands together. And so this is a really powerful concept. You can create these keyboard triggers to have certain parts of your character animate, show or hide different layers of your Photoshop or Illustrator file. So for example, another example, I think if I press, uh, what is it? Oh, that's later. <laughs> a sword coming out of his hand. If I press Q, he glows, and his screen uh, glows. And this shows off we just added blending mode support uh, in the latest version. By the way, when it stretches like that, it's just because it's losing my face, and uh, he's going all over the place. The lighting's a little weird here, and I'm moving around, so I apologize for that. Um, but you also have the ability to trigger uh, certain animations, frame-by-frame -frame animations. So for example, if I press the T key, he gets this heart animation. And this is just a group in Photoshop with three layers inside of it, a three-frame cycled animation. And then just in Character Animator, I set it to say, OK, uh, when I press the T key, start playing that, uh, that particular animation. Here's another guy, Red Monster, in there, and some other things. And so that opens up a ton of possibilities, create these really expressive, cool characters. So this robot, if I press 2 now, he gets kind of worried face. If I press uh, 3, he gets angry. Four, he kind of puts his hand, you know, eyebrows down like he's bored. Um, a few other things. Uh, of course, his, uh, his hand over here can change into a cannon, and he can shoot out lightning bolts and fire, or both at the same time. I do this hours a day at my office. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and then what I showed you previously, if I press U, his, uh, 
hand opens up and becomes a uh, sword. And again, this is just layers and groups in Photoshop, and I'm just triggering them with, uh, with Character Animator. Oh yeah, and I forgot, if I press 1, his whole face opens up and he has a second face uh, as well. So you can make characters as simple or as complicated as you want. And the great thing about this is it's great for newcomers like me who are new to animation, have always loved to draw, um, but also seasoned animators are doing some really cool stuff with it as well. So, you know, this idea of live animation, being able to do animation live, it's kind of a foreign concept. And 20 years ago, about The Simpsons had a funny quote about this, where they said, very few cartoons are broadcast live. It's a terrible strain on the animator's wrist. Now, as fate would have it, about 20 years later, Character Animator and The Simpsons teamed up together, and they did a live animated episode. Uh, Homer Live happened last year, and Homer took questions from the East Coast and the West Coast. They did this two separate times, uh, all improv, and done live with Character Animator. So let's take a look at how this went down. And to prove that we're live, on Saturday Night Live, last night, Drake was terrible. Now to take your calls. If Donald Trump becomes the president, yes. are you going to move out of Springfield and possibly move to Canada? Well, there are a lot of people who want me to move out of Springfield already, so, but I don't think Canada will want me to, will welcome me. But you know what? That's why I'm for Bernie Sanders. I love his chicken, but out of respect, we should refer to him as the Colonel. Hello? Joe. Hey, Homer, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. Is that your question? I was wondering, what kind of car do you drive? A se oh, uh, I drive a hybrid, which is a combination of old and terrible. Next caller. <laughs> so this is great. Uh, it, all improv live. They did the East Coast and West Coast feed. And then some things went wrong with the international version. But they already had the character rig, so they said, well, let's just do some international apologies. And so they did several more sessions uh, from this character. And so it was a huge success. It was a lot of fun for fans to talk to Homer uh, for the first time. We're seeing this a lot with companies is they have cartoon characters and having live chats on Facebook or YouTube where you can talk to a character and have fans actually ask and interact with them uh, is a very cool concept. Now, another cool thing you can do with Character Animator, with that animated character, is I can send that out with an alpha channel. And I can overlay that over top of whatever I want, a video feed, a video game, uh, a live looping animated background, or a late night talk show as one of the best examples we've seen. Uh, this guy. Please welcome Cartoon Donald Trump. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for being here, Cartoon Donald Trump. Thank you, Steve, and it's great to be here. He started it. Wait, wait, what, what, who, who started what? Anybody, Steven, whatever they started. You know, unless it makes America great again, in which case I started it. it it's very exciting, the best. You know, it is true that this week didn't start exactly as we planned it since 1998. But I... <laughs> Yeah, but I think everyone agrees that now is the time for us all to come together in unity or harmony or solidarity or whatever synonym resonates more strongly with you. <laughs> De okay, just gonna delete, deleting, delete, delete. Uh, even though Vladimir Putin is a great leader, strong, warm, like steaming bowl of borscht, I will yet be told what to do by anyone. No, no matter how, no matter how handsome they are. Speaking of temperature, Stephen, your studio is very much too hot. Excuse me a moment. Ah! What? No, we're just good friends. We're, we're so close, we finish each other's... Elections. <laughs> So they've done some incredible work on The Late Show, and uh, it's awesome. This two-character setup, this is the first time uh, it, uh, that's been done. And then uh, they, the cool thing is, while they've pioneered a lot of this stuff with this live animation stuff, uh, they've also done a lot of traditional animated pieces. And so you can not just do the live stuff, but record performances and put them together. And we've got dynamic link to After Effects and Premiere Pro. So you can take your characters and your compositions and then bring them to the editors and you know, effects things that you know and love. And it, it looks great. And they've got a really quick turnaround time. You know, it's sometimes just a matter of hours before they go live to air. And so it's fantastic to be able to have such a quick way uh, to, to put, turn around these, uh, these animations. So this is all great. Let's go back to that robot that I made. And 
you know, while everything is looking awesome, there's still one thing missing, and that is, remember I said, I, my robot is standing still. He's still standing in place. And this is, you know, this is there's one, one missing thing. And luckily, in this latest release that we just released last week for Character Animator, we have now added walk cycles. So it's now easier than ever. I see a few claps, thank you. <laughs> uh, it's now easier than ever to get a character up and running and walking. Uh, you just tag a few parts, and it immediately starts working. I'll show you what I mean. So here's a character uh, called Walkbot. See a theme? I keep drawing robot characters. Uh, and this guy, if you just do him by himself, he just kind of looks weird and moves around. And that's fun in and of itself. But um, if I want him to actually walk, what I can do is go into the rig panel here. And with my character selected, I'm just going to go to his behaviors. And behaviors are like special rules that you can give your character. If I want him to breathe or blink or other things, you add behaviors to him. And they're just written in JavaScript, but they're special things that give him new abilities, like the ability to walk. So if I add the walk behavior and then go to the body, I'm just going to tag a few key parts that Character Animator needs to know for this character. So let's tag uh, this right around the belly button as the waist, this over here as the hip, and I'm going to select the head and select the whole head and just tag that as the neck. So that'll bob up and down uh, with the character. So now it, let's look how he's looking so far. OK, so something's happening already. He's kind of dancing. He's jumping up and down. Uh, so we can tell that some start of motion is happening with our character. So at least the hip movement and that stuff is starting to happen. So let's start to select one of the legs here. And uh, I'll add a few more tags. So let's do the knee. And like that, right knee. Uh, there we go. And the ankle. And the heel and the toe. And then let's look just with these four more tags that I've added. Let's see how that's starting to look and come together. All right, so now he's starting to skateboard, kind of. He's got one foot uh, you know, motion, and that's starting to happen. So we're, off, we're you know, doing a good job. Let's finish it up now. So the left leg, I'm going to double click it so I get a little bit uh, more uh, isolated view of this. And so I'll just add the knee here, and the ankle, and the heel, and the toe. And by the way, if I wanted to give my character more bone structure, I do have the ability to do that with these things we call sticks. You just kind of draw where you want the bones to be. Um, I'm going to leave that off for now just because I want him to have kind of more of a rubbery, spaghetti-style look. But um, that's one option that you have to give your characters a little more structure. And then finally, let's finish with the arm. I'm going to do uh, the right elbow here and the wrist. And then go to the left arm. I'll double click that and do the elbow and the wrist for that. So this whole thing you know, probably took me just a couple of minutes to get this character, this uh, you know, 2D Photoshop file, up and running. But now I've got a walking character. And so it's pretty cool. You know, right away, uh, he's, he's starting to move and walk. And I can, of course, change his style. So if I want to be a little more confident, I could do a prance. All right, it's looking pretty nice. Uh, I could do a run. And then I don't know why, how this got past QE, but uh, headbang. I don't really know what that one's all about. Um, but you do have the ability to customize this and make it work for you know, the personality of your character. So uh, if I wanted to, for example, have a little bit more arm swing, I can turn that parameter up, or I can turn it down. Um, if I had like a, you know, a zombie-style character, uh, I could change the arm angle to go up a little more so he's reaching out to try to eat your brains or something like that. Uh, so you have a lot of you know, options like that to help personalize it. Now, he's also right now walking in place. But if I set this instead from immediately to left and right arrow keys and change the body speed to 100%, then when I press the left and right arrows, kind of like a video game character, he just moves back and forth with no foot sliding whatsoever. Uh, it looks like he's walking on an actual surface. And again, this is something I export into After Effects, Premiere, uh, whatever I want. And that's, that's fantastic. Um, so for live streaming, one option you have in Character Animator is the ability to uh, stream your live puppet to other applications. Uh, so things to be able to stream to Facebook Live or YouTube or broadcast TV or whatever you want. So here I've got my buddy Red Monster. And uh, if I go into my settings down here, uh, we've now added Mercury Transmit support, which means this opens up a number of new ways that you can stream your character with an alpha channel out to other uh, places. So one example of that is uh, Telestream's Wirecast. So Telestream, right over there, I can see him from here, uh, has a booth. And because I have the Nutex NDI plugin and Telestream's Wirecast, if I go in here, and I've got a cartoon background already, and I go to Capture Devices, down here, um, whoops, I didn't want to do that. Uh, down here, I see uh, NDI source Dave Warner local. And so if I click on that, 
that's going to bring in my character as a live feed into here. Now, this doesn't look that interesting, but now if I do this, now I can take myself and put this alpha character on top of me, and now I can have a conversation with myself with an uh, animated red monster character. Which way am I looking this way? OK. Uh, so this opens up a number of really cool creative possibilities, whether this is you know, like what The Late Show was doing with, um, with cartoon Donald Trump, or you could have two characters actually talk to each other. So if you connect two laptops with a network cable, uh, you can have two sources come in and have two characters debating with each other, or have a live video in the background, or a video game, or you know, whatever you want. So very cool stuff. And it's been really inspiring to see all the interesting stuff that uh, the community has been doing uh, with character animators. So Scribbly, for example, this guy is an innovative Twitch video game streamer who created a custom TV-headed character and does commentary while playing video games. And he gained thousands of followers overnight when his channel got featured by the official Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook accounts. And he continues to add new surprises. He always has a new t-shirt uh, for every stream. And he actually controls several parts of his puppet with a foot pedal. So as he's playing the games, he has some of the face expressions uh, triggered by that. Look Studios are these two brothers in the UK who are doing some amazing things with Character Animator in a variety of styles, especially experiments with 3D stuff. So they make these things in 3D, bring it into a PSD in photo, you know, Photoshop, tag everything the right way, and create these really awesome 3D characters. In fact, they just opened up their own store. So they are making custom puppets for clients and companies uh, around the world, and they're selling characters. So they've built a whole business around Character Animator. Uh, these guys, Schmidio, uh, this are a company, and they've uh, been experimenting with like stop motion style. So they lower the frame rate to 12 frames per second, and they photograph different clay parts to create these really cool animated uh, claymation stop motion style characters. So you see all the different parts. I think he made out of Sculpey, and he photographed each of these individually, brought them together in Photoshop, lowered the frame rate, gets a really cool stop motion style look. This girl, Emily Watts, she never animated before. She was an illustrator, but um, she never knew, you know, never touched After Effects, animate, character animator, anything like that. Watched a few tutorials online, and now she started a children's web series called The Weather Girls of these girls. Uh, they're going on a Pokemon Go hunt or something like that in this one. Uh, it's pretty fun. Um, Athena Studios in Emeryville. These guys uh, have a storied history of really great stop motion work, and they created this character, Maddie. We worked with them for this release uh, to create this awesome character, and I was able to go on the set when they were actually shooting her, so she's an actual like eight inch uh, doll. She has all these detachable faces for the stop motion thing, which when you see them by themselves, it's a little creepy, uh, but you snap on the different things on the puppet and it has different expressions for stop motion. But they took all those, brought them together, and uh, put them into Photoshop and to work with Character Animator. And so you get a really cool character. This is a character, you know, I animated her in, in a Character Animator, brought into After Effects with Dynamic Link, and put everything together to make a really cool scene. And so I have her right here, actually, the character. And you can download her and check her out. Um, she's a free example puppet um, as well. Um, and so here she is. And the cool thing is she's got quite a few cool features. So actually, she's got um, head turns. So as I turn my head, she's automatically turning her head. Uh, and then if I press left or right, she starts walking to the left or the right. Now remember with the walk bot example, when he walked left and right, he walked one way and then he walked backwards. But with her, she's actually turning and changing. So you can actually have multiple views of your character in your Photoshop file. And as long as you tag them as left profile and right profile, when you press the left and right arrow keys, it will switch uh, to that. And I think she has some stop motion things too. I think that if you press A, she crosses her arms and folds them. They film this you know, kind of stop motion stuff. And then I think if you press D, she blows her hair, uh, something like that, pretty cool. Uh, so I've been switching between workspaces a lot here, and that's one of the other new things that we've added in here um, are these different workspaces. So start just gives you all these examples of you know, things you can do. I'll talk about this in a second. Uh, really helps you out with learning the app. Rig mode, this is where all the rigging uh, happens. And so all the things, if you want to add a stick or a dangle handle or uh, you know, the hair swaying or any of that stuff, it's very easy to do that. Just add these little data points to your character down here. Recording. Recording, uh, there's a ton that you can do with this. So instead of fiddling around with keyframes or getting you know, everything uh, just right, you're just acting and naturally performing and doing a performance capture. So I have this character, uh, Simons here, this, this fox, and I recorded a short performance with him where he's kind of just waving and hanging out and doing things. So what I'm going to do is just record a quick uh, voice uh, thing. So let's change recording speed back to that and just say, uh, howdy, everybody. Whoops, that didn't work. 
Why did that work? Well, it should work. Anyway, if you recorded stuff, uh, why is that not working? Test, test. One, two, three. Oh, there we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to NAB. My name's Simon the Fox. Yee-haw! All right. And if I do that, this also shows off a new feature in the latest release, which is lip sync editing. So now, if I go into that track, I see every mouse shape down here on the bottom uh, that I have said. And so I can you know, get frame by frame lip sync precision. So if I want to move this shape you know, a little bit closer or further out or trim it, or if I right uh, click it, I can swap it to another mouse shape and show a different thing. So this makes lip sync editing, frame by frame precise lip sync edits, really easy and fast and uh, simple to do. So, uh, you know, we've got a ton of resources out there with Character Animator, as I was saying. Um, so I'll just kind of end with that. Uh, so on the start page, there's that interactive tutorial. That's a three-minute cartoon that teaches you the basics of how Character Animator works. Uh, you go through this mad scientist and pizza delivery boy and, and a lot of fun stuff there. Video tutorials, if you click on that, that takes you to our page with tons of uh, YouTube tutorials. And a lot of them have example files you can download and follow along with. Um, there's a ton. We also do monthly episodes on YouTube where we showcase the best stuff that the community has created. So a lot of that stuff that you saw early, earlier with Scribbly from Twitch and the claymation stuff, that's from uh, those episodes. And then if you click on these template puppets, these are a great way to get started. This will open up the character uh, and also the Illustrator or Photoshop file, and you can make edits. If you want to give Chloe red hair or change the pants of Wendigo or do whatever you obscene things you want with WalkBot, you can do that. These are free for anyone to download and play around with. If you click the See More uh, button up there with uh, the little uh, red monster, that'll take you to even more examples that you can download for free and check out and experiment with. And then every puppet that I've ever drawn and created is also available and linked on that page on, uh, on my website as well. So that's it for today. Uh, thank you guys very much for coming out. We have a demo pod in the back uh, if you'd like to uh, check us out and see more in person what Character Animator can do. And if you want to reach me, feel free to tweet or see me at YouTube at OK Samurai. Thanks very much. Enjoy the rest of the show.